and this is Alice. And today, what are we making, Alice? Well, we're not going to be making clay pots, but we're going to be painting them. Yay! So there are two different kinds of pots we're going to make today. I'm going to make one, and Alice is going to show you how to make the other. So mine's kind of a uh, flower design, and Alice's is a bumblebee. You do not have to copy Alice. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. That's right. So if you've got another bug in mind or if you have different colors, um, absolutely feel free to, you know, let your creativity go and um, use your imagination. So um, first things first, we're just going to share a little bit about the project we'll be making. We'll kind of walk you through the steps we're going to go through and then we'll show you some of the supplies we'll use today and then we'll get started. So um, for the flower pot, if you want to do this one, um, you need three different paints. So I have a paint for my base, a paint for the rim, and then a paint for some of these designs. And you'll also need your stickers. So part of the project is foam stickers. And we'll talk about in a second some other things you could use if you don't have those foam stickers on hand. And Alice, do you want to share what they'll need um, or what, what they'll need as you build the bumblebee? So you'll need two types of paint. You'll need a black and yellow paint. You'll need glue and googly eyes and chenille sticks. Like I call them thingamabobbers. Chenille sticks or thingamabobbers. Excellent. Okay. So with that, we're going to walk you through the different um, products and supplies that we'll use today to make each of these and then we'll get started. So first, of course, you need your clay pots. Yes. And um, we actually recommend first things first, cover your surface because we are going to be painting today. It's really important um, that if you're not on a table that you can get messy, you're going to want to cover it with something. Um, so yeah. make sure you have something underneath. You can only don't cover it if your parents say they, you can like stain the table. <laughs> right. And only that, if your parents say so. Exactly. And I did not say that. So we have a covered okay. surface. So you get your clay pots. Make sure your clay pots are clean so you can take a baby wipe or a um, wet, paper towel. wet paper towel and just kind of gently wipe them down to make sure there's no dirt or anything on them um, before you start painting. And what, do you, what are the things you're going to need to make the bumblebee today, Alice? So what you're going to need to make the bumblebee is you're going to need acrylic paint, white and black. I mean yellow and black, not white and black. You're gonna need some brushes, some magical paint brushes. And then you're gonna need some glue, chenille sticks, and googly eyes. And if you don't have chenille sticks, you can use you can paint these black um, popsicle sticks or mm -hmm. whatever you want to call them. And you can glue them on. Yep. If you don't have those. Exactly. Um, and for the flower pot, you're gonna need um, acrylic paint. So. Um, there, we have these uh, from Creatology. They are, are washable, but we also, you could also use just um, kind of regular acrylic paint. We've got some Craftsmart paints in different colors too. That will work just fine as well. You just do want an acrylic paint so that it adheres really nicely to your clay pot. And then um, we're going to need some stickers or, or decorative elements of some sort. So you've got, um, we have, I actually brought two kinds today. Foam so we've got stickers. some foam stickers that are like ladybugs and flowers. And we and have felt stickers, which are stickers. They have the sticky part on the back, so mm -hmm. you don't need to glue them. But they're kind of made out of like fabric. They're like felt. Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. And if you don't have stickers, or, or if you just have normal stickers, those would work too. Or if you don't have stickers and you want to use construction paper and just glue it on, that'll work too. So use your imagination, sky's the limit. Um, and I'll use paintbrushes as well. Ours, mine's, mine's pretty simple. So with all that, go ahead and get your supplies together. If you're making um, the flower pot, or if you're making a different type of bug other than the bumblebee and you want to use different colors, go ahead and gather your paints um, and um, start pulling those together. So we're going to get ours ready here. I have the invisible paintbrush. <laughs> it never paints. So while we're pulling our stuff together, um, Alice, do you have any bug jokes that you might want to share with people today? You remember it? Mm -hmm. Okay. What bug reads the dictionary? Tell us in the chat, what bug reads, reads the dictionary? The dic We have any answers? 
We're going to give it away. Yeah. Oh, some people saying, I don't know. And then we yeah. have a few saying a word, a few saying a spelling bee, a bookworm. Oh, those are all great answers. But the answer to this one is a spelling bee. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And one more joke while we're still getting our paint ready here. So um, let's see. Oh, I had to write it down because I keep forgetting it. <laughs> Where did bees go after they are married? Where do you think they go after they are married? Put it in the chat. <gasps> I know this. I know this. I know this. Hold on. Hold on. Do we have any answers? We have a few people saying a beehive. A few Ooh saying a honeymoon. Ding, 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 ding. It's a honeymoon. <laughs> I thought those were cute. Okay, so we've got our paint already. Um, we're just using a little paint palette here. It kind of keeps it nice and um, uh, contained. And if you want to mix paints together to make your own shade, you can do that kind of here in the middle. So for Alice, um, actually, uh, for Alice, we've got the yellow and the black. Um, and she today said, shared that she might want to draw a happy face on hers. So I gave her some white too, and I'm going to steal some of that for my project. And I've got pink and green. But feel free, like I said, choose your colors, decorate however you want. So we're going to get started. Um, Alice, why don't you show them kind of your first step as you're making the bee? So the first step of making a bee, you do not want to paint this top part right here, the rim. Because um, that's where you can hold it, or you can hold it from the bottom, but I think I'm going to hold it from the rim. So I'll take this brush. I, well, I'm going to take my favorite brush. I put in a little bit of yellow, and then I'm just going to paint some yellow at the top. And then I'm just going to paint the line until I want to stop. And then I'm going to go into the black line. Mm -hmm. So she's just going to do kind of alternating colors all the way down the pot and just pull them around the pot. So and I think you should do them sideways instead of up and down, because up and down would be like that and then like black. And it's a little harder. So it's easier to go around the pot like this than it is to kind of make little lines like this. So we recommend you go around the pot like that. Yeah. And if you can't keep um, exactly precise lines, that's okay. Um, you can absolutely, um, this paint dries really quickly, so the good news is you can just do another coat and paint over any mistakes you make, so don't well, worry about wait, that. Which paint are you? This, this, this one. So for the flower pot, I'm going to take my base paint, which is the, my green, and I'm just going to paint the entire bottom of mine. So I'm not going to paint this bottom because when I set it down, it would make kind of a mess. So we're just going to paint around the bottom of, of um, the bases. So go ahead and pick your first color. And just to show you what we're doing, just kind of painting around the bottom, right? And this is going to take a minute. So um, while we are painting, um, we did some research on bugs. And I have some questions. I did some. Let me rephrase that. I did some research on bugs. So. Everybody's going to learn something up, today. I searched up the jokes and none of them <laughs> had answers. Uh, so like, I didn't get the point. Like, okay, so who knows what the study of bugs is? Does anybody know? It's it's a, it's a kind of a hard word. Yesterday was a book. <laughs> I don't have a great run on words. Does anybody know? Can anybody put in the chat what the study of bugs is? Oh, we have, it looks like we might have some answers. What are we seeing? We have insectology. We oh, have a good idea. What was that last one? Entomology. But That's, uh, it's, that was right. That was the answer I was looking for. So entomology is the study of insects. And um, did you know that there are over 1.3 million species of insects in the world, whole world. That's incredible. Can you, can you imagine all those bugs? And they like have to pick them up with tweezers so they don't squish them up. Some of them imagine when they're studying them, yeah. And, and um, as you think about bugs, 
what are some, what, like, what do you think about when you think about bugs? Do you think they're good? Do you think they're bad? Do you think they're gross? Um, I think they're gross, but they are good because if spiders were not alive, mosquitoes would take over the world. I mean, yeah, mosquitoes would take over the world. That's right. So spiders help us control the mosquito population. What are some other things that bugs do to help us? And also one fun fact is two of the poisonous, one poisonous spider is not with in a spider web. So if you run into a spider web, don't worry that it was a poisonous spider web. Okay. That okay. Is yeah, that's not entirely factual, but um, close, close. So, um, you know, always check the spider, but yeah, spiders can be good and, and friends to us too. What are some other things in the chat? What are other th good things that bugs can do for us? Um, they can give us like bees, can pollinate so they can give us honey. That's right. They get pollen from plants and help plants grow. They pollinate the plant where they don't get oh yeah. Um, and help plants grow that help feed us. What are some other things bugs might do? Anything from the chat? Like from the chat. Um, we have that they're good for the soil, that they make pollen. That's right. Did worms aerate the soil and help it to, um, and create nutrients in the soil that help our plants grow. That's exactly right. So bugs, bugs make, oh, sorry, go ahead. They're good because some bugs eat mosquitoes. Mm hmm I like those bugs because mosquitoes like me. I don't know about you guys. And me. I get like bit almost yeah. 100 times a year. But so, you know, I think a lot of times my first reaction when I see a bug is like, ooh, gross. But they're actually really great creatures that help us every day, which is awesome. They help us. Do we have some comments saying that bugs are good, but kind of gross. Mm-hmm. I agree. Like, not on me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fun fact, some people actually eat bugs. That is true. In some countries, um, it is very common, and bugs actually have a lot of nutrients. So, um, yeah. Alice's brother at camp one year actually ate a bug as part of, um, they had a science guy there who had some bugs you could eat. And he, he ate Oh, one. yeah, I remember yeah. that. I, didn't. I think it was a cricket. No, yeah, it was like a chocolate. No, well, yeah, it was a bug, and then they handed out chocolate covered crickets, and like, I don't want to do this. But I <laughs> And it didn't actually taste bad. See? So you tried bugs. That's, I didn't know that. Yeah, it was so, like we were at one of the museum. Mm -hmm. um, so if you can see, um, I, am, I am nearing the end of painting my base. Alice is still working on hers. Hers is a little more paint intensive than mine because she's got to do layers. So, um, <laughs> But you can see hers is coming along very nicely too, right? So she's going to continue to work on that. Um, and this is mine from yesterday. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, something to note as you're working on the as you're working on the base, if it when it starts to dry, you'll know. And here I just got paint on me. When it starts to dry, you'll know because it'll it, it won't be shiny. Um, you can kind of see it. I think on the camera a little bit. There are spots that are still shiny. That's that's the spots that are still wet. But if you've got spots that are more matte and kind of dull, those should be dry. And you can start to look around, just kind of look around the base of your, of your clay pot. And if there are any spots that you can still kind of see um, the, the underlying color on, just use a little spot to kind of touch them up so you get a nice thick coat. You don't really have to do more than one coat on this, but maybe just kind of look for spots that you need to touch up a little bit that, are, that might be showing through. And what I do on the bumblebee is um, I don't paint all the way all around it at once is because the lines, um, I just sometimes put it like this and I don't want the lines to like mess mm -hmm. up a little. So I'll like paint the whole side down here until it's like down to the like last black part or maybe yellow part. And then I'll stop there, paint the top mm -hmm. the whole way and then I'll and do the around. other side. Okay. So however, whatever you're comfortable with is entirely fine. Um, so Alice is going to continue to work on hers. I'm going to move on to the next 
phase in mind. So what I'm gonna start working on next is painting the rim of my clay pot, okay? And I'm gonna paint, start with the outside, but I'm also gonna paint the top inside, about an inch down into the inside of my clay pot so that if I plant something and there's dirt, but you can see a little bit of the inside, it's the same color as the outside. So it'll kind of um, look nice and uniform, but I'm not gonna paint the whole inside because you don't really need to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with my next color. I'm gonna use this pink as my next color um, and start working on my rim. But you guys go at your own pace, there's no rush. Um, while I'm doing this, who can tell me um, the answer to this question? So bees are found on every continent except one. What continent are there no bees on? Hold your, hold on. Please um, post, post your answers in the chat and we'll see who gets the, the answer the fastest. I thought this was really interesting. Wait. I don't care. It's it's almost unanimous. Everyone is saying Antarctica. Everyone is right. It yeah. is Antarctica. So I don't. I just. I don't think there are a lot of things to, to pollinate in Antarctica. Well, they could pollinate so. like doing the like some boxes, like snow boxes, they, like snow hawks. Yeah, but you're not. You're, they might have like yeah. dirt on them. It was the like, flower once once they were little, and the bees like. Okay. Okay. Keep, keep painting, that is very imaginative. So, you know, this painting part can get a little tedious. So Alice and I, when we were doing our practice pots, oh. um, we like to play a game and we're not gonna necessarily play it right now, but we thought we would tell you guys about it and maybe you guys could play it on your own with your friends or your family. So, so Alice, you wanna tell them about what we do? If you have like your whole family doing this project with you, you can do it with them, but if you're by yourself, you don't have to do it, but after the project, you may be in the project right now, you can go get a family member or the person next to you. You'd be like, you, you would start a story and then the other person would add on. Mm -hmm. So like, once upon a time, there was a little, little tiny bumblebee, bumblebee, I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. bumblebee named Bob. And Bob was so sad that because all the other bumblebees had magical powers and Bob could only turn into a toilet. So Bob the toilet morphing <laughs> bee. Um, so Alice starts the story and then I have to take, um, make up the next sentence or the next kind of chunk of the story. And then I leave the story um, and kick it back over to her and she adds to the story. And we go and go and go until the story is done and we bring our story to a conclusion. So it's another kind of fun, creative way um, to pass the time. We use it, we do it actually in the car a lot when we do trips. Mm -hmm. um, but that's another kind of just fun game to play with your family and you can get some really silly stories. And you do not have to just do it in the car. You can do it at home or you mm -hmm. can do it like you can say hey let's play this game in the car from like coming back from a restaurant like once the school thing is over exactly but some people are going out but they're wearing masks mm -hmm. which is good yep yeah. and so um i encourage you all tonight to to start a bug story with your family i think it would be or the story of a bug or the story of a plant also is another oh yeah like Jimmy the plant once was a tiny little sprout, but then when it grew big as a tree, it was like, no. So once upon a time, there was this little sprout and seed. Once he grew up to be a toddler, he was Groot, baby Groot. He became baby Groot from? And then 10 years later, he was Groot. Okay. And my name is Groot. And he was so weird in his childhood. So that once the fox guy said mm -hmm. not to touch the red button okay. and Groot touched the red button. Okay, thank you, Alice. I think that was a very interesting start. To if you wanna see story. what else happens, go to Galaxy <laughs> and the Guardians. I think we may have seen that story before, but anyway, 
Um, why don't we, so I'm still working on my rim. I just finished the outside. I'm gonna start working on the top and the inside next. Um, why don't everyone uh, show us some of your, the progress on your projects and how things are coming along? Are we seeing any different types of bugs or different colors? Or are we seeing any cats or burritos? Animals? Alice we, had, we had one person say that they were doing a ladybug instead of a bump. I love that idea. That's super cute. Uh, someone doing a watermelon. Ah, that's like mom. Kind of the same colors, but I like the way they're like headed with it. Seeds. That's a cute idea. Um, so we were to Alice and I were talking yesterday too about you know as we're making these, these are pretty just to have around the house, but you could also use them as gifts or uh, you know other or things you might be able to do with these projects have, when like, they're done. A very tiny kit in our puppy, you could like put some stuffing in here. And like, you have an Instagram account. No, I don't have an Instagram account. But like you could put it in there and like it would be peeking out or like it would so, be like, slimy in there. Mm -hmm. And then like you would take a picture, post it on your Instagram and you get like five billion followers. That would be amazing. Um, I'm too young for Instagram. That's correct, you are. And my friend is six and he has Instagram. Well, I'm not his mom. So, um, the I'm working on the top of my rim. You could also give these. These would great make great Mother's Day presents or Mother's Father's Day presents or How Grandparents' Day presents for that like a year. Well, or um, you know, school is going to start soon. Teacher, boo, summer's over. School has to start. But a great for a beginning of the year teacher gift. She could put her pencils and things in this, or a oh, gift card could. or something. To a store, maybe like Michael's. <laughs> yeah, be like, my mom was like at Michael's, and like I gave you a Michael's gift card. It has a bunch of supplies for That's like, right. School. You can use kind of use creativity in the classroom too. I think more people go shopping on Amazon for school supplies than Michael's. How do it? Well, for certain things. Yeah, like for like, so so. How is how is your project coming? Why don't you give an update on your project? Um, my project's going very well. I'm doing the rim now. I haven't painted the bottom, the yellow part of the bottom, which I'm going to do after I paint the whole rim, and then I'm going to go on to the other side, which I'm going to... All right, so it's coming along quite nicely. And I've almost got my rim all the way done on the inside. You can see um, how I'm starting to just paint that top kind of inch right there, right? I'm almost done. I have a little bit more to go. And I'll probably do a little bit more on the outside because I've got some kind of lighter areas at the top. Um, but I am getting to almost to my next stage. So while we're waiting, while I'm finishing up these pieces before we move on. Um, sure, Alice, you want to ask that question? Do you, in the chat, do you guys know any good bug jokes? Does anyone else have, we've told a couple, does anyone else have any other bug jokes you would like to share? While we wait for those to come in, we have a few questions. Okay. Um, so some people are wondering how long they should wait for the paint to dry. Okay. Um, if, so you're using this acrylic paint that you're using, a big box of acrylic The, the Craft Smart acrylic paint? Um, it normally takes like probably a minute to dry and yep. it's, it's, it's really, it doesn't, it shouldn't take that long. Again, if you're, as you're looking at your project, um, the wet spots will be shiny and I'm trying okay. to see if you can kind of see like it. Right there. Yep. Like you can kind of see some of the shiny in the light, but the, where it's dry, it'll feel, it'll, it'll be matte and it won't be shiny. So it's really easy to tell, like, just don't touch the shiny parts. Um, and when, when it's all not shiny, you can, you're ready to like, you can paint over it or put another layer of a uh, different color paint on and you'll be fine. It shouldn't mix together. Um, but it'll have that kind of really matte, um, not shiny look to it. If you're using just the regular acrylic, if you're using a paint with gloss in it, um, and, and there are some paints that have, that have a more glossy finish, you know, you might have a little bit of a different experience, but for the most part, but I do you sometimes should. with that, like, I used to do nail polish, I don't wear it anymore because I didn't like it, but like, I used to do my, my, 
friend's mouth. Mm -hmm. and, like I would wait like a couple minutes and then I would take a tiny piece of paper towel and like kind of fold it up and like touch it and like throw mm -hmm. out something. That's a that's a great idea. So if you're if you're not sure, um, that's a great idea, Alice. Use a little piece of paper towel and just kind of dab it against um, your project. And if any paint comes off, you know it's still wet and you need to wait a couple more minutes. But it should be pretty quick. Any other questions? There were some people who are wondering if they can paint the bottom of the pot as well. If you have something under your surface, you can, but it will make a like, couple marks on it. I did it. It just has a couple of spots that aren't off, but they, you can't even see them. So. Yeah. so you can do it. Just remember, like when you're holding it or when you're setting it down, you know, make sure that's just dry um, or else you'll get paint in other places. Maybe you don't want paint. So, um, but yes, absolutely. You can paint the bottom. You can paint the entire inside if you want. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want to do. But I also have a few jokes for you, Alice, if you're ready for them. I'm super excited. We're ready. Why wouldn't, why couldn't the butterfly go to the dance? Because it was a mothball. Ah! <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> why, why don't ants get sick? I don't know. Because they have little antibodies. Oh, I don't, that one's really, I, <laughs> that one's really cute. I love these guys. These are fabulous. Okay. And why we suggest not to um, knit inside, we suggest not to paint the whole thing because you, because like painting side would be sideways and then up and down would be a little bit harder, but it would take way longer for it to dry. Mm -hmm. And what I do for the like rim of the inside, the inside rim, I paint it up and down instead of side to side, but I paint the all like the outside side to side. side, to side. Okay, just so you can kind of get the uniform look. Mm -hmm. So my pot is, and I actually have a little part of my little pot kind of got a, an irregularity there. So I'm gonna show you the pretty side. But um, my pot is all done for the most part um, with my base, my base paints. So next, I'm going to move on to the design along the rim. Um, so we've actually got um, so a couple different ways you can put a design on the rim. So from our, from our kind of initial project, um, it has kind of dots and polka dots around the rim. And there are a couple ways you can get circles um, on the rim of a project or an any point in a project. So one, and this is probably the hardest way, honestly, is to just try to paint a circle. And you can kind of, um, you know, you get paint on your brush and you can kind of circle it around and try to paint a circle, but, but it's really hard to get a perfect circle that way. So if you're looking for something more precise. Which I do. Um, the easy, the way I do it actually mm -hmm. is, so I have my paintbrush. I dip it in a little bit of white paint, and then I just... Oops, you I got paint on your finger. Ah. And I just like dab it like that. And dab it makes it. a very easy circle. You just use the end and I go like, mm -hmm. and it's a very easy circle. Thank you. So you can, and the thing I loved about, Alice actually taught me that hack, is you can use pencil erasers um, and do the same thing because they're nice and round. You can use different types of brush with a larger bottom or a smaller bottom to give you different sizes. Um, something else we have are, are, these are called spouncers. And a spouncer is basically a little piece of foam on a stick. But the spouncers can have shapes, right? So this one happens to have a circle, um, but some spouncers are stars or squares. So you can also use a spouncer. They work really well for paint projects. When you're using a spouncer, um, it's going to give you a little bit of a texture to your dot, uh, but you just dip it in the paint and it'll get, it'll actually get a lot, quite a good bit of paint on it. So you want to kind of dab it off before you put it on your project to where it's just covering the bottom of the project. And then you can bounce it on to your pot and it makes a nice kind of uh, easy circle. So that's another kind of um, option when you're when you want to make different types of circles. Today I'm going to use a, a combination just like I did yesterday of the spouncer 
and the end of a paintbrush to make the smaller dots. Um, also, as I, as I worked this project yesterday, um, you want to think about your pattern and, and spacing for your pattern. So if you're doing a pattern, you want to think about making sure you're leaving enough space to complete that pattern as you go around and so it looks nice and even, right? Um, if you don't want to make a pattern or, or you don't have kind of something as a pattern as bold as this one, you might not have to worry about that as much. But just think ahead a little bit if you do want yours to have a pattern around the edge um, that you've kind of got it spaced so that you, you can complete your patterns all the way around. So I'm going to start working on my dot pattern. While we're waiting, um, what, why don't we talk a little bit about what happens when you make a a mistake on your project. Is a mistake a bad thing? No. So you have two options. You can like restart. You can just grab another pot if you have extra and restart the whole thing. Or since acrylic paint dries so fast, you'll have to like wait a cut like probably 30 minutes because you can have to, if you want to, uh, I would, you would have to do like one minute of layer and then you would have to kind of cover up the paint if you're using like black and then you're putting on top of yellow. Mm -hmm. But you're gonna um, just, since it dries so fast, once that mistake is dry, you just paint over it and um, then you just uh, wait a couple of minutes and then you can do a second layer and it's pretty much That's fast. Fine. And sometimes, um, Sometimes mistakes lead to kind of interesting new ways of doing things, right? Like good things. Do we have any um, questions or, or how, can anyone show us how your projects are coming? We have a few people who would like to see um, the ones that you have completed already. If you guys could show those again. Absolutely. So we have the bumblebee that I made. And then we have my mom's flower pot. So these are the two we made. And so you can see Alice just had the different layers of paint. And then we moved to the googly eyes and the chenille I stems. I did the bottom. I, you know, I didn't do the whole top, but I just took like, I mixed colors because I wanted to and I animated it. But it was a very good one. So if you're moving a little faster than us, um, and you're thinking about what's, you know, you finished your um, bumblebee pot, let's say, and you've got all your paint on. I was want you to keep working on yours. Um, the next thing to do is to glue on your googly eyes, okay? So, um, and that's really easy. You just take some glue and some googly eyes and, you know, stick them in place. Um, and then I'll show you how to do the, the chenille stems too, in case you're working ahead. We'll go over this again when Alice actually gets to that point in her project, but I'll show you now in case you're working on it. If you don't ahead. have the shimmy old stents, you can paint these, like I said before, and glue them on, um, mm -hmm. the popsicle sticks. And you can just paint them black and glue them on like the shimmy stents. Mm -hmm. But you can't curl them. Right. So if, uh, if you're ready to move on to the chenille stem part, this is what a chenille stem looks like. They're also called pipe cleaners, or Alice calls them. Thingamabobbers. Thingamabobbers, a uh, very popular name. And I, to make, uh, to make these, um, I took about a three inch section and cut off about three, at about three inches down. So I'm guesstimating a little bit, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, um, we... But you just do a snip and then do another snip and you can kind of use your first one as a guide to and see how much you have to snip the next If one. you are using grown-up scissors, make a parent help with you if you're very young. And these do have little pointy bits, not too pointy. They won't like hurt you with you know, blood, but it will just kind of poke. Yeah, they, they do have kind of sharp metal insides, so you want to be careful in handling these. So to make your antenna, um, and again, everyone, we'll go over this one more time. I just, if people are working ahead, um, and a little faster than we are in painting, that's fine, I wanna show you. So you just take the, the top of the um, chenille stem and you can either hook it like that or we just kind of made a complete circle um, and just mold it out a little bit so you kind of have a lowercase q is kind of what it reminded us of without the, without the bottom tail. And you're gonna make two of those. 
It's fine to do them the same direction because you can just turn one around. Um, so I'm going to do the next one. And again, you know, they don't have to be perfect, but um, get them as close as you can. So now I've got two that are ready to go. Um, and then you're just going to take glue and be sure you're thinking of like which direction they need to face um, and put glue on the on the side that's going to stick against the pot. So as you kind of, I don't know if you can see it well here because it's black on black, but we stuck it right below the googly eyes. We stuck it on the inside of the pot below the googly eyes. And it eyes. probably takes, like you have to hold it for like probably two minutes or maybe three, so it sticks on. If they just keep on falling off, re-glue them and stick them on. And I suggested this yesterday, but we didn't do this. If it doesn't um, like stick on for long enough, you can take a tiny paintbrush and you can put some glue on it. And if it doesn't stick on for long enough, you can like glue it on, but like then paint the glue. You could do that. I will say, um, you know, working with uh, Elmer's glue and chenille stems, the, the tricky part about chenille stems is that they are um, they do soak up the glue. So yesterday my fingers kind of got sticky as I was holding them there and I tried to move my finger away and the, the chenille stem came with me. So it can be a little tricky. Um, if you have a parent with a glue gun, um, that's probably an easier and faster way to get them adhered, but only parents can use glue guns. Um, and the Elmer's glue definitely worked. We I got there, it just took a little bit, um, took a couple tries. So um, we'll go over that again. If you're working ahead on the flower pot and you've got yours all already done, the next step is, is the super easiest step of the whole deal. So you're just gonna take your stickers. Um, for this project, again, I used the pack of uh, flowers and ladybugs and leaves. Um, but again, if you have different types of stickers, um, I also got some felt ones that have kind of sunshine and rainbow. Um, and you just peel off the back of those stickers. I'll show you an example. So here's a ladybug. And these stickers, the foam stickers, just have a, a, a peel on the back and it's as easy as that. And then you just stick it on wherever you want it on uh, your pot. Um, I was able, if you're not able to get them centered or in the pattern you would like, I was able to kind of reposition them, but you wanna be careful because once they're on there, they do stick really well. And you, the other cool thing you can do is layer them. So these are actually two different flowers. I put one foam sticker on top of another foam sticker um, to get my um, pattern here. So that's if you're working ahead. If you're not working ahead, we, Alice and I still have work to do. Um, any questions in the chat? We have a few people who are asking if they can get creative and use different stickers if they want, or use sparkly um, Chanel stems. Yes. Oh my goodness, yes. Let your creativity go wild. You know, the best thing about a project like this is you can really do whatever you want and it will turn out beautiful, I'm sure. And just like Alice said earlier, if you make a mistake or something you thought was gonna be pretty or um, you know, thought was going to look good and it looked amazing, in your mind. looked amazing in your mind and then in reality it's not so amazing. You can always paint over and start again. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there are all kinds of things you could actually use to put on these pots. Um, uh, paper, and construction paper, ribbon, um, there's all kinds of fun stuff you could do, but definitely use your imagination, get creative. Um, I've got my main dots. Ready? You'll see a little, some of them are wonky, but I'm going to let them, <laughs> let them go. So I'm going to start on my, my little dots now. And I'm, I am going to use Alice's trick and use the back end of my paintbrush. Um, just remember that you've got um, paint on the back end of your paintbrush so you don't get it everywhere. And I'm just going to, sorry, I'm, let me show, show them what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to take that and make a dot. Boop. And there you go. You have a nice dot. And I'm just going to do that around in some sort of a pattern around the top of my rim. And your colors do not have to be the same colors as ours. And if like you don't have a green and you and you want to make a, the same one as a, my mom's, you don't have to use green, but if you want to use green, you can like 
pick some colors. Like you can, if you only have a dark green, you kind of want a lighter green. Um, and you have this light green, but you want kind of the teal color. Mm -hmm. You can, I think, um, I mix paints a lot because I just do that a lot. And I actually just mix colors together and it kind of makes a color. So what I would do to make the teal color, like kind of get a turquoise color mm -hmm. in the middle of the thing, just a little, mm -hmm. and a little bit of green and a little bit of white green, like, and then some white and then mm -hmm. it might make teal. It might, and you might, or you might get a brand new color mm -hmm. um, that's, that's even prettier, so. Um, you can kind of see I'm working on my... It looks um, like Minnie Mouse's <laughs> It does, kind of. She wears pink and polka dots. So there we go. Um, let's see. One more um, fact about these. How's your project coming before I Good. put it out there? Um, so it's all the way done. It's just I'm going to have to wait for one part to dry so because it kind of got funky. Okay. You know, you know, Oh, that's okay. Why don't we go ahead and, and um, start working on googly eyes? Okay. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so fact about bees. Everybody see if you can t um, tell me the right answer. For honeybees, the leader of a honeybee colony is known as what? Is like it? the name? Or? Mm -hmm. the name? What do you call the leader of the honeybee colony? Does anybody know? Do we have any answers in the chat? Well, we have a few people saying that it is the queen bee. That is correct. It is a queen bee. And in honeybee colonies, um, all the different bees have different jobs, um, which is pretty neat when you think about, you know, insects understanding um, that they have different roles to play. It's kind of interesting. I'm, um, so I'm just gonna use the um, googly eyes for my um, little friend here. But I just made his adorable mouth. Okay. And I'm gonna try to make a tongue. Like not sticking out, but just a little bit. Okay. Let's, let's finish um, the project so everybody can see how it needs to be done and then mm -hmm. you can um, add those details after, okay? And show everybody your awesome new details. Can I turn down the temperature? I mean, turn up the temperature. Yes, you may. It's a little cold in our house today. <laughs> it's hot outside, so it's cold inside. And the numbers go down. Okay, so I'm getting Alice's googly eyes, also known as wiggly eyes. Um, my personal, one of my personal favorite crafting items. And some Google eye, Google eyes are actually like they have a sticker on the back that you can peel off. So before you glue them, you can check if they like, you can peel them off, but if they don't come off, then they're not glueable. I mean, stick, sticky. Mm -hmm. And so I was done because I tried it yesterday. They are not, but so then you gotta use glue but even if they were stickers, I would suggest using glue. Okay. And if they're stickers, you could use. And if you want to, you can use this glue, like for like some paper. But I would just set, suggest more like using the wood type glue instead. That's kind of easier, huh? Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm um, waiting for my top to dry, but I'm very going to be very careful and and start putting on my stickers on the bottom. So trying to avoid excuse me, avoid the top. To do that, I'm going to stick my hand in the jar and hold it like this. And that way I don't have to hold it from the bottom and it's still really stable for me as I'm putting on um, my, my stickers. So today I'm actually going to use my felt stickers, um, Ooh, not the foam yeah. stickers. So I have a couple of different kinds. There's a rainbow and a moon and a sun, um, some hearts and stars and clouds. So I'm going to start decorating mine. Just remember that if you're holding it upside down, you have to put your stickers upside down. So when you turn it back over, they're facing the right direction. Like probably the only one you have to, the two that you have to put upside down are these. You got to mm -hmm. like this, but all the other ones, you can just put them in any direction. That's right. If, so why don't, why don't you start working on getting that googly eyes on yours, Alice? Wait, I'm going to, Okay, here, I'm actually going to do this on this side. You can see I'm going to start to put the, the stickers on. 
Awesome. Yeah. I'll do my cloud down there. What kinds of stickers is everybody using to put on your projects? Are you using shapes? Are you using cats? Burritos? Alice would love it if you were using cats. Or burritos. I love burritos. Do you guys love While we're waiting for those to come in, we have another good uh, joke if you want to hear it. Yes, please. Yes. What does a bee use to brush their hair? Hmm, I actually think I know this one. Alice, do you know? Mm, no. What does a bee use to brush its hair? A honeycomb. Yes, I love that one. That is awesome. I love your jokes, guys. How about we get one? Um, all right, so I'm almost, oh, my cloud's a little wonky. We have some people using jewel stickers. Oh, that's a great idea. That's a great idea. There are like little gem and, and jewels that have similar to these, have the um, a sticker on the back. Um, yeah, you can make a really sparkly glam uh, play pot with one of those. I love um, that. No, so using pom poms. Pom poms. That would be nice and, and fluffy, fluffy. Right now, like my bee too. is a cyclops. So she has a cyclops bee because it only has one eye. Exactly. Exactly. You guys can see. All that. right. So we're um, uh, nearing, Alice is, is starting to near the end of her project. Mm -hmm. If you're nearing the end of your project, please share them. Uh, love to see them. We actually have, oh, hold on one second. Oh, wait, I'll hold on. Uh, we would actually love for you to share your project at hashtag makeitwithmichaels.com. So show us what you've made. Here's my clay pot. I think I want to do a little bit more around my um, thunder cloud, but I've got my moon and I've got some hearts and I've got my sunshine. Um, sunshine number two, sunshine number one is right here. Key. Um, so I'm almost all done. Alice, can I help you wrap up your project? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And my dad also calls me for a nickname. Squirt. And they're actually the drink, which is pretty much Sprite, named Squirt. And I this have been true. made a drink. Sure. I am famous. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. We're going to put the last googly eye on Alice's, and then we'll start working on those um, ch chenille stems. Does anyone need to see the chenille stem step again, or does everybody feel good about the chenille stem step? You can had a few requests to see it. Okay, great. Okay. All right, so uh -huh. while Alice's googly eyes are drying and she put a little mouth on hers today and with paint. Um, okay, thank you. Okay, so we're gonna redo the chenille stem step. So you're gonna take one chenille stem, pipe cleaner, thingamabobber, whatever you wanna call it. Um, and we're gonna take our scissors and I'm actually using the kids blood tip scissors to, to cut through this. It just takes a little bit of a, a, a clip, but not too bad. And I just, you can guesstimate or eyeball about three inches um, is, is plenty. So you just are going to literally cut it, snip it, and then you can use your first one to kind of measure out where you need to cut your second one. So it's like a ruler. So you can actually get um, probably two to three antenna. Um, out of a single pipe cleaner with that measurement. I can get, I can get about three with the three inches. And, and then um, um, you take your, one of the pipe cleaners and you're just gonna take the, the top, probably about an inch of the top and simply just bend it over, fold it over. You can leave it as an open um, antenna or you can kind of close the loop. What we, is what we did for our project. We closed the loop and then I just kind of squeeze it to get a bit, a little bit more of a round. And then you're gonna do the same thing to your other one. So just repeat the process about an inch down, bend it over, and squeeze it to get around. There you go. And then you've got two antenna. And next, you're just gonna take your pot and we'll go ahead and start to do this on Alice's. And this is the tricky part because again, the, the glue can really, the, the um, chenille stem thingamabobber can really soak up the glue. Um, so you want to get just enough glue 
on your chenille stem and then you're gonna place it and just be careful about your placement. And I totally just stuck my hand in wet paint. Um, and try to kind of gently let it affix to the, the clay pot, just right, kind of right behind where the eyes are. And if any of you are making frogs, like you might be, mm -hmm. and you have, you want a tongue on it and you don't want to paint on it, like paint a tongue, because sometimes that's hard to make a beautiful round oval thing on the bobber. Mm -hmm. You can actually make a tiny mouth, like kind of big-ish, but tiny. And then you can take a piece of paper, and at the end, curl it up, and then I um, glue it to the frog's mouth, and then it looks like it's kind of sticking mm -hmm. up. And so I've just taken both of those chenille stems and glued them. In a, it's a little hard again, because it's kind of black on black, but I've glued them to the inside lip of, um, no! of the, the pot. And like I said, until they're dry, until the glue dries, it's, it's, you don't want to fuss with these too much because the chenille stem does soak up the glue and they start to get loose. So um, they can be a little finicky. If you've got a parent with a glue gun, that's a really fast way to do it too, but only parents can use glue guns. Only parents. Do we have any questions? I know, if you're a teenager. Yeah. We have a few questions about where they can post pictures of their projects to share with everybody. Oh my goodness, yes. Alice is gonna get, get our sign. Um, we have a hashtag and it is hashtag make it with Michaels. So you can go on um, Instagram and, and post um, hashtag on make it with Michaels. And um, we've got a ton more classes for you guys to participate in over the next couple weeks. So um, Kids Club Camp Creativity goes through August 1st. Every day at 3 p.m. there will be a free Kids Club class. You can go to michaels.com camp-creativity camp um, to look at the whole schedule of classes and sign up now. Um, and if you, want to, if you weren't able to kind of do the craft today and you just kind of watched and, and, and weren't able to follow along but you want to try another day, you can always go to michaels.com backslash classes. And uh, we post the day after the class, we post a video of the class. So you can kind of follow along at your own pace or um, if you really like to craft and just wanted to, to experience it all over again, you can watch the video as, um, as you want to. So. And next week, next week and the week after next week, we are going to be making crafts. Wait, what That's yeah. right. So next week, Alice and I are back on Tuesday. We're going to be making yarn monsters next week. So very exciting. Yes. And they um, make sure not to... If you have an animal, like a cat, and they like yarn, make sure not to let them get involved with that. And if you have a dog, make sure it doesn't chew it up. Yes. Words of, of great advice. And if you have so, a carrot or a bird, <laughs> make sure it doesn't steal it away thinking that it's a bird. It could be, it, or for its nest. All right, so we are all done with our craft. I, I really thank everyone for joining us today. I think we're almost at our time. Please remember, share what you made at hashtag make it with Michaels. Um, we had a great time with you today and I can't wait to see the clay pots that everybody made. These are the ones we made yesterday and I'm just <laughs> drawing so I can't. Here, I'll pick it up. Thanks everybody.